Corpus High School, the basketball team making us all so proud today. They didn't just win their Sweet 16 game in the state playoffs, they dominated. Tonight, you're showing your support on social media. Messages like this from Alma. That is awesome. Glad to see El Paso teams going far in sports. First, Count Theo Eagles football team and now Andrews basketball team. Way to go, Eagles. New video tonight of Las Cruces police officers beating a man in handcuffs. Our New Mexico mobile newsroom with different perspective of what's behind now a $12.5 million lawsuit. Brought your wallet, I hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's getting emptier. <laughs> And that is good for El Paso, the largest sports tournament in the world. Now hours away from rocking and rolling the Sun City. El Paso is already buzzing with bowlers. I'm Darren Hunt, and I'll tell you what's ahead as we roll out the red carpet for the U.S. Open Championships. Rain chances go up tomorrow. What does that mean for your weekend? That answer in storm track weather. So many stories have you buzzing tonight. Get ready. This is ABC 7 and 9, and you become part of the day's news right now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the El Paso Las Cruces CW. Well, good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here on ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. I'm Bob Hart, Nicole Gomez, our storm tracker. And I haven't said it this week, I don't think, our social media goddess. You How you doing? Said it. You I haven't, haven't said it all week. Well, a reminder, <laughs> she's our goddess. Thank you. Hi, Bob. Everyone out there watching, this newscast gives you a voice every night. So get your laptops, your smartphones. We want to see you on the CW. And yes, we do. Nicole, you and I, we we are proud Andrews graduates tonight. This is the story everybody's talking about. It's behind the buzz in our social media network. Andrews looking just fine in their quest to win a state championship in basketball. David already showing his support tonight, like a lot of you are. Congratulations. Take state. Good luck. Well, ABC7 partnered with EPISD to stream the Andrews game on the district website. We'll talk about the partnership with EPISD this week and the Andrews students. But first, we're going to get to some of the highlights. Andrews taking on Dunbar in Snyder, Texas today in the big game. It was all Andrews punching its ticket to the Elite Eight. I remember this name. You will not forget it. Zacchaeus Jackson. He made sure they would get the victory. Jackson was on fire just in the first half. He hit eight three-pointers, 26 points for him in the first half. Andrus was in control the entire evening. Now the Eagles, they went on to win 86 to 60. They're going to face Palo Duro tomorrow for a trip to the Final Four. Jackson had 32 points and 10 three-pointers. We'll have much more on the game coming up tonight on ABC 7 and 10 in sports. And in just a bit, some more of your well wishes and what you're saying in our social media network. All right, switching gears now. Just two days ago, we brought you this security video showing a man beaten while in custody of Las Cruces police. It happened back in December. Russ Flynn's skull was fractured. He had bleeding in the brain and other injuries as well. Flynn is now suing for $12.5 million. So our New Mexico mobile newsroom got a second security video, and it's a different angle from the booking area that day. This shows Ross Flynn escorted into the holding cell. Now, officers would check in on him, and they even re-handcuffed him because he said he had a bad back. Then about 30 minutes later, Flynn kicked the door one more time, and the officers, Richard Garcia and Danny Salcedo, they struggled with him, and then in the video, it looks like they take a knee to Flynn and then slam him on the ground. In a police report, Officer Danny Salcedo, who's one of the officers there, said this. We continue to make every effort possible to try to get Mr. Flynn to have a seal, but then he continued to move us around and push us around and continued to move his hands as in a way attempting to grab a hold of us or our equipment. Flynn's attorney says the officer's actions were uncalled for. You can see from the video that Mr. Flynn uh, was helpless, defenseless. He had handcuffs on, uh, and he's being thrown around that cell like a rag doll. Now, both officers now on administrative duties while LCPD and the district attorney investigate. want to let you know this is a hot topic in our social media network. Some of you defending the officers, others defending Flynn. What do you have to say about it? Tell us right now. A Las Cruces grand jury is moving forward now with child abuse charges 
against 58-year-old Margaret Edmond. It decided that the home video proves Edmond mistreated her 11-month-old grandson. Hidden cameras set up inside her son's house reportedly recorded video showing Edmund slapping, jabbing, and knocking the baby down, even hitting his head on the crib because he fell down. Now, police saying he was only taken out of the crib maybe up to an hour once a day. It also shows the baby's only companion was the family pit bull, who would lick his face and play with the baby using its dog toys. Now, the boy's father, 18-year-old Manuel Teus Edmund, was arrested during a meth bust. You might remember back in January, officers say the family's living condition was deplorable. Fifteen pets were inside the house. Police saying urine and feces were all over the place. And the 11-month-old boy, he apparently only had four baths in his entire life. And at the time we reported this, some of you called them monsters. New information tonight on the shooting outside an East El Paso strip club Sunday morning. These three men are in jail, charged with attempted murder. Jeremy Lamont Horn was arrested in Florida. He's now waiting to be sent back to El Paso. Sierra Larry and Brian Winston, they are already at the El Paso County Jail. Now, El Paso police say the men were in a fight outside of Jaguars Gold Club, and somebody with a gun opened fire. A 31-year-old man was shot and is expected to be okay. Police corrected the initial report of two shooting victims, now saying only one person was shot. This also getting a lot of attention on our Facebook page. A lot of them are kind of offensive, the comments, but we can show you this one from Robert. Way to throw your lives away. If you have something to say about this, join the discussion right now. There's already about 20 comments, and that was pretty much the only one we could show on air. Well, El Paso police saying 36-year-old Eliseo Derrado was the man who was killed overnight on the 1300 block of Zaragoza. That's by the Viva Nissan dealership. Police saying Dorado was likely driving drunk and speeding when he crashed into a taxi cab head-on. Dorado was then thrown out of the car and later died at Del Sol Medical Center. The cab driver is expected to be okay. And just a few hours before that, another crash near a different car dealership. Police saying a man crashed his car into a light pole at Mission Chevrolet. That pole then fell on a brand new Camaro. All right, time now to channel your inner Lebowski. Saturday marks one of a 128-day bowling marathon as the USBC Championship makes its way to downtown El Paso at the convention center where more than 60,000 participants. They come to roll for the championships. Now, it runs from March through July 12th. 62 lanes of bowling alleys there now, or from the bowling alley, are now there, and it's expected to generate 75 million bucks for the El Paso economy. So this place is incredible. Um, you know, you come walking in here, you see the scoreboard, you see all the lanes. You know, and for a bowler, you get a little goosebumps, you know. I'm sure it's exciting. Again, 60,000 people are expected to be here over the next four to five months. And, of course, you know they're going to be spending money, hotels, food, restaurants, all that good stuff. So, again, they're trying to get a piece of that $7 million prize. ABC 7's Darren Hunt continues our complete coverage. And we'll have his story right now. I noticed that little accent. Where are you all from? Uh, Minnesota. All right, Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, Minnesota. Don't you know? <laughs> well, welcome to El Paso. Well, thank you very much. We're excited to be here. All right. Well, we're glad to have you all, and we hope there's many more to come, and we know there are. Tim and Lynn Pater are the first of more than 1,000 visitors a day coming to El Paso every day over the next four months. We got a big group. We got about 12 of us came from Minnesota. Be honest. What are some of the things you've heard about El Paso coming here? Dangerous as far as if you cross the border. Um, otherwise, fun. What's on the top of your list? What do you want to do here? Shop. Yeah. Yep, and watch bowling. Yeah. See how my husband does. Most bowlers are expected to be in town for three to four days, but they only bowl for a few hours, leaving them lots of time to see the city and hopefully spend a lot of money. They're going to see our venue for eight or nine hours of that time. So the rest of the time, they're out and about. Enjoying everything that uh, that El Paso has to offer. Matt Canazaro is media relations director for the USBC. 7,000 teams coming in, and the airports, the hotels, the restaurants, everybody's going to see it, and uh, I hope they're ready. Michigan, Nebraska, uh, from here in Texas, other cities in Texas, California, 
so far. Eric Martinez is running an El Paso souvenir shop for his parents inside the convention center, and they're already cashing in. The past couple of days, we already made a, a bunch of sales, lots of people from around the country. Uh, they never seen Mexico stuff before, so I mean, it, it intrigues them, so it's pretty cool. It's going to pay off, isn't it? Hopefully it will at the end. And that was ABC7's Darren Hunt reporting. We'll get to some of the comments and what you're saying on that in just a bit. But look at what a beautiful day that all these visitors had to experience here in the borderland. This is video out of Las Cruces where you can see spring is apparently in bloom. Don't be fooled by today's sunshine. You're going to want to remember to take a jacket no matter where you go. If you're going out in the evening, we have a lot to cover weather-wise tonight. And Nicole, because we have so many people in town, what are they going to have to do? Just a sweater or a jacket? What are you thinking? Uh, it's probably nothing compared to what they're used to. You know, well, it's probably hot to them, but to us, it's really cold, yeah. right? The but, folks from Minnesota, this right, is nothing. Right, this is nothing. This is like summer to them, I bet. <laughs> but our temperatures today were nice and comfortable. And as far as tonight, it will be a little chilly, but temperatures will be warmer than they were last night and this morning. 65 was the high today, officially at the airport in El Paso. 62, Las Cruces, and 55, Ruido. So currently, we're sitting at 51 degrees, so temperatures not too bad. Winds out of the east to northeast at 7 miles per hour. 48 is the current temperature in Las Cruces. Feels like it's 45 degrees. Our wind speeds are light tonight, and tomorrow it'll be a little breezy, but for the most part, it'll be a pretty nice weekend. But the clouds will roll in. I'll let you know if that means rain this weekend. That's all coming up in Storm Track Weather. All right, Nicole, got to get to some of these comments on the bowling uh, situation because earlier I said, hey, are you excited about, uh, on Facebook, are you excited about this coming to El Paso and the economic development? Some of the comments are funny. We have Gregory, he just said, really? I bowled a 300 once. Nobody invited me to the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gregory. And then one more. Uh, Christian saying uh, to his friend Yvonne, hey, we would be a rocking team. Well, maybe you would. Maybe they should join next time. Yeah, so, Christian, good. Gregory, and everybody else who commented, thanks so much. Now, Nicole, if folks are going to the Monster Truck Show this weekend at the Sun Bowl, they probably want to bring a sweater or a jacket, like sweater, you're saying, right? Sweater, jacket, whatever makes you feel comfortable. I sound like a mom, right? Uh, you are a mom, though. Yeah, See, you're the legit <laughs> mom. Here's a live look at the Sun Bowl right now, where the Monster Truck Show is gearing up. If you hear some engines roaring this weekend, that's why. El Diablo, El Toro. El Toro Loco, I should say, and Grave Digger all kicking up the dirt and doing some crushing. Tomorrow's show at the Sun Bowl, 5 to 7. Sunday's show is from noon until 2. Hey, speaking of, it's not quite a monster truck show out there. It's actually quite nice on the freeways. Here's a live look at traffic from the Tech Stop traffic camera. Now, uh, keep in mind, the Sun Bowl traffic is usually a headache after the monster truck shows, but UTEP officials are now saying changes that they've made uh, at the roundabout and also the two lanes uh, that go onto I-10 that they've added will definitely help smooth the flow of traffic. But again, for right now, our Tech Stop traffic camera show, everything looks just fine. Now, Nicole, we always tell people to join our discussions. They do that uh, several ways. Uh, the KVIA.com and see you on the CW Facebook pages. Also, see you on the CW at Twitter and Instagram. Nicole, how about our Andrus Eagles? Oh, I'm so excited. Aren't you? I wish I could be more excited, but we're on TV, so I, I'll wait till uh, we're in commercial break. I had to contain her, <laughs> folks. It was crazy. Now, they are taking another step. They made that step tonight, going on to win, hopefully, eventually, a state basketball championship. That's right. They were in Snyder, Texas, taking on the Dunbar Wildcats. ABC, ABC 7 partnered with EPISD to stream the Andrus game on the district website. And I'm so glad we did. So many Eagles fans and other fans here in the borderland because we got to watch the game live. Uh, again, if you are just joining us, folks, Andrews took on Dunbar in the big game, the big name now to talk about, Zacchaeus Jackson. He's going to be the big man on campus if he already isn't. Eagles win 86 to 60, facing Palo Duro tomorrow. Hoping to go to the Final Four. So we're now in the Elite Eight. Jackson at 32 points and 10 three pointers, Nicole. And Amber says, Good luck and good job. Felicia adds, Cool, go all the way. And Ted saying, Spank. <laughs> Come on, Ted. I love you because they did spank him. And already, Terry, we see you on the CW tonight. She posted this picture on our See You on the CW Facebook page showing the final score on the big board. Thanks so much, Terry. We do appreciate that picture. I want to shoot, baby. Shoot. Well, first, Salt and Peppa announced the free show at the Socorro Entertainment Center. That is actually happening tomorrow. We are flashing back to the fun we had last month and also looking ahead to tomorrow's excitement. And apparently Dave Chappelle is popular in El Paso. Get this, the comedian just announced another show here. Mike telling us this. 
110 times better than George Lopez. I like George Lopez. I think they're both fun. <laughs> And Nicole, how about that weekend weather forecast? Well, the clouds will start rolling in tomorrow morning. Does that mean rain in the forecast? We'll take a look at the latest future track computer model coming up in storm track weather. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. You don't just watch the news, you are the news. We'll be right back.